today, the inflationary Big Bang Theory is how we explain Genesis, the beginning of space and time. This is not a point in space and time, but an emerging blend of space and time. So space and time begins here. Stephen Hawking talks about P instanton. He talks about the size of this point that the entire universe begins is about the size of a P, just a few millimeters across, but it contains the entire universe. And this is where space and time begins. It's an infinitely dense point, And what we assume is that the laws of nature existed at this point. Before the Big Bang, the universe was roughly a million, billion, billion times smaller than a single atom. However, at this point, there is only one force. We call this force the God force. So all the other forces, gravity, weak nuclear force, electromagnetic force, strong nuclear force, they're all going to come after the Big Bang. A period of approximately 10 to the minus 35 seconds is when gravity splits up from the God force. So there'll be one force called gravity and three other forces that have not split up from the God force yet. Between 10 to the minus 35 seconds and 10 to the minus 33 seconds, the universe is going to go through a period called the inflationary period. This is when inflation begins. At this point, the speed of light is far, far, far greater than the speed of light is today. Between 10 to the minus 35 seconds and 10 to the minus 33 seconds, gravity works like anti-gravity. And this is the bang and the big bang. Now, the way space is going to expand is very interesting because every point in space moves away from all other points in space. So if you take this point here, all points in space are going to move away from this point. And if you look at this point here, all points in space are going to move away from this point. So there's no central point to this expansion. Center of the universe is everywhere. What this really means is that at every moment, there is more and more and more space. This is the expansion of space. So during this period, the universe doubles in size every 10 to the minus 35 seconds. By the end of inflation, universe is gigantic. In fact, after the first second, after the Big Bang, the size of the universe is perhaps bigger than the Milky Way galaxy. After a trillionth of a second, temperatures are still extremely hot. At this point, the strong nuclear force splits up from the other forces. And so we're going to have strong nuclear force, gravity, and then the electroweak force, which is weak nuclear force and electromagnetic force together. So at this point, three forces exist. Now, space itself, when it's empty, is full of what we call virtual particles. Particles that come into existence and then disappear, like an electron and a positron, antiparticles. And so they come from empty space and then as soon as a particle sees an antiparticle, again, they annihilate each other and go to non-existence. Uh, to bring out the particle and antiparticles into real existence, what we need is gamma rays. And gamma rays at this point are going to be abundant because P instanton is extremely hot and extremely dense. Gamma rays are going to be pervading the space and time now, when two gamma rays get very close to each other, the energy of the gamma rays bring out a particle and an antiparticle, in this case a positron and an electron. Another way of bringing about the existence of real particles into the universe is to have a singularity and an event horizon. If we have a particle and an antiparticle which are virtual, at the edge of the event horizon, a particle can be stuck inside of the event horizon and an antiparticle on the outside. In this case, the antiparticle is going to be emitted by 
the black hole. And so in this case we can have antiparticles and particles separated and they can become real. So from virtual particles we can have real particles introduced into the universe. This radiation that comes from black holes is called Hawking radiation. At this point we're going to have four forces all split from each other now. A millionth of a second has passed into the history of the universe. The Big Bang event is approximately 13.7 to 13.8 billion years ago. And so at this point, this is the constitutes of the universe. We're going to have 12% atoms, 15% photons, 10% neutrinos, and 63% dark matter. Now, dark matter is the energy that is contained within the space itself. Today, this has changed. What we have today is that dark energy, which is the energy within empty space, it constitutes 72% of the entire mass or energy of the universe. Atoms are only 4.6% of the entire energy or the mass of the entire universe. Dark matter, approximately 23% of the mass of the entire universe. Now, when we talk about mass and energy, you can think of matter and mass as basically two sides of the same coin because we can make energy from matter and matter from energy. In the 1950s, two scientists working for Ma Bell, which was the telephone company at that time, they were doing research on the noise on the telephone lines. And as they were researching the noise on the telephone lines, they found that the noise was coming from everywhere. It didn't matter which direction they were looking at with their big giant antenna they're picking up radiation. This radiation was in the form of microwaves. Today we call this the background radiation of the universe. We get this from every point in the universe. Doesn't matter which direction we look, we can get this background radiation. This is a remnant of the Big Bang. This is the first time that we can see what's left of the Big Bang, the embers of the Big Bang. When we look, it's approximately the same temperature. So within 10,000 to 100,000 of a degree, we have variations in this temperature. This is the background of the entire universe and left over from what we call the Big Bang. Where we have slightly higher temperatures, we have red. And we have slightly cooler temperatures, the orange, then yellow then a little cooler, maybe 10,000th of a degree cooler, we have green, and so on. Places where we have red, that means there's going to be clusters of galaxies. Places where we see slightly cooler, like these dark spots here, we're going to have what we call voids in space, where there are no galaxies and clusters of galaxies. So this uniform background radiation is what's left over from the Big Bang and it doesn't matter which direction in the sky we look, we see the same background radiation to approximately within one ten thousandth of a degree. As we see later on, these points are going to become our universe that we love. This is the history of the universe from the beginning till today. So left and right is time. This is time zero when the universe begins this is quantum fluctuations in that P instanton. This is a period of inflation. This is approximately 380,000 years after the Big Bang. This is the afterglow of the Big Bang. Then we have a period we call Dark Ages. During Dark Ages, electrons and protons are going to combine now, and now light is going to have a chance to go through the universe and reach us. The first stars are born approximately 100 million to 200 million years after the Big Bang. And after the first stars are born, the universe continues to expand, almost like coasting. So the expansion of the universe means that the universe is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And again, every point within this space and time is moving away from all other points in space and time. That's the expansion of the universe. As the universe expands, the rate of expansion starts increasing. That means it's accelerating. So for the last 5 billion years approximately, 
the universe has been accelerating in its expansion, which means at this rate, the universe will expand forever and ever and ever. And the universe will become extremely cold. There'll be nothing left at the end of the universe. And there'll be a horrible ending, dark, nothing left, but exploding stars and black holes 